Hi, I'm Melissa Nolan, and I'm an assistant professor at the Arnold School of Public Health. So coronavirus is a zoonotic disease, meaning that it originated from animals. Most likely what happened is that in nature, this pathogen has been circulating for years, possibly even decades, centuries, who knows? And for some reason, it mutated. It was able to become infectious in people. We're seeing lots of human-to-human -human transmission, which has taken on a different life of this pathogen. So novel means that we haven't really seen it with human-to-human -human transmission before. This is a pathogen that has been largely off of our radar, and so this is the first time that we have populations that have no immunologic memory to them at all, meaning that no human has been exposed to this pathogen before, so that essentially anyone could be susceptible. I think the biggest concern with it is that people that are elderly, immunocompromised, could develop severe disease. We've never seen this before, so we don't really know much about this pathogen. We don't know how it's, other ways it could be transmitted. We don't know much about incubation period exactly. We don't know where it originated from. So I would say what makes this really concerning is that we just don't know much about it. There's still a lot to be learned. And unfortunately, we're learning at the same time that it's an evolving outbreak. So the novel coronavirus is similar to seasonal flu in the regard that they both are transmitted through respiratory transmissions. So both can be aerosolized particles. They present somewhat in a similar way. So it could be somewhat challenging to know without having a history of exposure, which one you might have. So we, I would say for the large part, most Americans likely have the flu. If you come down with cough, shortness of breath, fever, it's probably flu, especially if you haven't had your vaccine and you've been around any other people with flu. However, with this new community transmission, it could make it a little bit more complicated for us to know whether or not it's this novel coronavirus or the flu, which is why we really strongly encourage you to talk to your physician and see if you should get tested. So because this is an unfolding outbreak, we still don't really know what are the best ways to prevent transmission. What we know is that N95 masks are probably the best way to do that. And those are what healthcare workers use. So they're not readily available on the street. And so that's why CDC isn't recommending that you buy kind of your general run-of-the-mill masks because they really don't work very effectively. Hand washing is the easiest thing that we can all do to prevent transmission of essentially all pathogens, right? You're really supposed to do it for 20 seconds, which could be two verses of the happy birthday song, or it could be the whole ABC song, which is something we all know. So making sure you wash your hands long enough with a good quality soap, and then doing it the right way. So normally when we think of respiratory infections, we think of the most vulnerable populations being kids, babies, and then elderly. So those kind of two extremes. What we're seeing though is very different with this coronavirus. It's really just the elderly that seem to be the most at risk. So babies and children actually seem to be doing a better job of fending this off. Of course, this is an ongoing outbreak, but at the current time, it seems that kids seem to be doing a better job. So certainly, if you have any indications of more severe disease, so that would be tachycardia, increased heart rate, if you have shortness of breath, any signs that this could be quickly advancing, that you might need some type of ventilator or respiratory support, any indications that you might need to go to the ICU, we want you to go right away to your physician. A very high fever, fever being over 101, that shortness of breath where you're struggling to breathe, you're wheezing, you're really having signs that you have a rapid heartbeat, those are the ones that we would be the most concerned about. Certainly still very concerned about our mild infections as well. We want to make sure that we're appropriately diagnosing those because that mild infection could be someone that's transmitting it then on to a more vulnerable population. If you wake up with very mild symptoms, we're encouraging you to call your personal physician, someone that you have a relationship with, and have this conversation with them and ask them, what should I do? So if you have 
a known exposure, particularly to a close contact of someone that has diagnosed coronavirus, or if you've been to an area where there's a high amount of community spread of coronavirus, you need to speak to your physician about whether or not you might want to undergo quarantine. And that quarantine can look different. So it could be contact isolation at the hospital where you're in a room by yourself, um, limited outside contact. It could also be a quarantine that's self-induced at home. And again, same concept, you're gonna to wanna to limit your self-contact. So not being around a lot of people, not going out to public places, um, you know, having your groceries delivered to your house perhaps versus going out to Publix. I think the most important thing is that people don't panic. 